just go find it. Nobody here yet, so oh, there we go. All right, guys, we're live here with Scott. Let me know if you can see and hear both of us. One second, Chris. I'm going to be right back and get some earphones. Okay. Oh, while we're getting ready for that, I'll just go ahead and talk for a minute. I hope everybody's having a great day. I don't know. I really got nothing to say. Where, where's everybody landing on Laurel versus Yanni? Good to see you too, Mohammed. got to tell you, I'm mentally spent. It's been one of those weeks, so I may not be as witty as I normally am if you normally think I'm witty. If you don't, then you're probably not in for much of a disappointment. I'm going to share this on a couple of pages. Well, thank you, Asim. Thank you. I think my video quality has improved dramatically, so finally getting the hang of that. Can you still hear me, Chris? I can. Okay, we're good to go now. Hallelujah. So far, this has actually, believe it or not, been one of the smoother ones of these I've done. <laughs> What's up, Ron? Looks like some people are starting to roll in now. So today we've got my friend Scott Allen, who is, runs a success, really successful SEO agency in, I think it's Kansas. And uh, what he's done really well is niche down his agency and he's going to talk a little bit about that and then we're going to take a bunch of questions and also he's responsible for this fine piece of art you see, you see behind me so thank him for that when you get a second chris says the classes he joined a few days ago and the classes are a lot better than i thought well thank you all right scott you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself that, that way we can get warmed up with some questions Sure thing. Uh, my name is Scott Allen. I We actually have two companies. One is the Kansas City SEO Group, and the other one is Breakthrough Dental Marketing. Um, started off, I think, very similar to a lot of you guys on the call, where uh, pretty much taking any and all SEO clients and then just through a turn of events ended up, I was actually... I worked at Sprint for 14 years doing, I was running the user experience and adult learning uh, section of the internal training at Sprint and decided it was time to get out of corporate America and ended up taking a severance package from them. Uh, I was actually at my personal dentist and he was doing the small talk thing and said, you know, hey, what are you doing? I told him I was doing digital marketing SEO and he popped up and said, do you have a business card? And I said, can we finish what we're doing in my mouth first? And started working with him and he is actually a, uh, technically a staff member. So that's with the, the, particularly in medical, more specifically with the dental marketing, we do have a bit of an advantage there because we have a, what they call it in the in the industry is a practicing wet finger dentist. So what we've gotten really good at is being able to understand what it takes. And again, a lot of what I say is going to be very dental centric, but it will apply if you're in healthcare, medical, chiropractors to an extent, and sometimes the health niche, but more people that have, you know, dentists, orthodontists physicians, uh, cosmetic surgeons, that type thing. The business model and the approach pretty much lays on top of all 
all of those niches and I guess I guess that gets us up to speed of where we're at now. Awesome, awesome. I know that we and we, you and I talk almost every day, and whenever you talk about it, it amazes me like the little nuances that you've noticed working specifically with one niche. So, can you talk about like how important that is, like to, to really learn like not anything specific? I don't want you to give away your your stuff, but how important it is to learn like the little intricacies of the niche that you're in. Well, again, and, and I will apologize again for, I'm always going to say, well, in dental world, but that's that's my world right now and what I'm most intimately acquainted with. As an example, let me back that up. One of the best things you can do when you are, you're trying to land new clients, you're trying to get those conversations, get the conversation started. As an example, in, in dentistry, they are very particular. They're it's it's an interesting niche in that they are extremely loyal. They understand most of the time the value of what we do as digital marketers. The problem is, is they have been burned by a lot of less than talented digital marketers or like ad agencies that do SEO as a as a uh, add on. They, that's not their their focus. Where you end up with a lot of times a graphic designer that's doing graphic design, doing website layout, and then they get tasked with, oh, by the way, you also need to do SEO. So they don't really get a good, uh, a full service SEO person working for them. As an example, with, with dentists, their vocabulary and the language is extremely important. And you can have a very good product, you can be really good at what you do and know the the online digital marketing space really well, but you're not going to get very far. As an example, they are really weird. It is always a dental practice. And if you call up their office and you, you say, well, I can bring your dental clinic more leads. You're, you're not going to get past the gatekeeper. And if on the off chance you end up talking to the actual dentist, they are going to shut you down because they are very, it's just, like I said, they're a very strange bunch, but the, that's an example where taking the time to, you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be an expert plumber. You don't have to be an expert athletic trainer, but you need to, when you're courting these people and, and trying to get the conversation started, you've got to show that you've done your homework and that you're not just another generic, you know, marketing SEO person. Excellent. Excellent. How did you go about, like, once you got hooked up with them, how did you just, just talking to them? Is that how you learned all the ins and outs or just getting to know them? Well, again, I think that we have a very unique situation in that my, my personal dentist is also one of my clients and also part of one of the companies. So we intertwined in a lot of ways. A lot of it is just we, we are extremely high touch with all of our clients. I think even more high touch with him. I meet with him at least once a week face to face for about an hour and sometimes and talk with him frequently. And a lot of it is just, you know, he, the, over the course of working with him, just through osmosis, just picking up terms or, or if, if you do end up with an insider is what I would call him. Don't be afraid to ask and say, what is this? What does this term mean? So that when you are talking with a potential client, you, you sound like you know what you're doing. I've, I've actually gotten to the point, I've been doing this long enough to where I've actually had been on the phone with a, a dentist and asked them when I graduated from dental school and I have to tell them I'm not a dentist, I've just been around them a bunch. Awesome. All right. I think that's uh, something a lot of people could stand to do. I, I, I'm guilty of taking everybody that, well, I don't take everybody that applies, but I don't niche down at all. And I really think if I focus that, I could grow the agency side of my business a lot. Not that I'm really looking to, but I could grow that a lot easier and a lot faster if I got to know the ins and outs of one particular industry that way. So I think that building those relationships and then focusing is probably really a really good way to be successful doing what we do. I think the advantage of one of the other advantages of niching down is you don't when you're when you're getting PBNs, when you're building network, when you're building properties, if you if you do it the right way, you can set up a pretty powerful, you know, I've got a dental network that is a just a, a net of all kinds of different things, but they're all 
very dental specific. So when I add a new dentist into the fold, it brings them up. Taking a while to get there, you know, almost say eight, nine months worth of pretty substantial work to get this network built up. But once you've got it in place with a particular niche, it allows you to, you know, any client that we, we bring on board, they always like to see quick results. And if you've already got the infrastructure in place, you get a win pretty quick, which makes you look good, makes your, your job a little bit easier. Probably keeps your retention rate a lot higher that way too. Yep. Awesome. All right. Um, I guess we'll just open it up to some questions. We'll see what we got so far. We got uh, Rajesh says, oh, legit tea. Yeah, those are going to be available real soon at legitmerch.store. So I'm just working on that, it, which is cool because a lot there's been a lot of demand for them. And plus it helps me learn e-commerce, which is one of the weaker sides of my marketing skill set. So here we go. Kirill says the new header on legit is nice. Oh, well, thank you. And thank you. Uh, I'll make sure that Jim hears that because that, that was all him. That and the, the lady in the picture. <laughs> Randy says, hey, good to see you guys today. Good to see you, Randy. What's up, Randy? Anush says, hey, Chris and Scott, glad to hear from both of you. Christopher says, when you are saying you sell leads, results fast, are you talking about ranking rent or just SEO their website over time? I'm not sure I understand the question there. I, when I said leads, I was that was a terminology thing. When you're when you're talking to a dentist, you don't ever want to call. They are leads at the end of the day. You're you're giving them leads. You're delivering them leads. But in in the medical space, you're delivering them patients. So that's a that's one of those little subtle nuance things that if you call up a medical facility and say, "Hey, I can get you a bunch of leads." I, at the end of the day, you're dealing with people and the people are patients. So it's just a little tweak in your language. I, I hope that's what the question was. Yeah, I think I think what he's thinking is that you were talking about generating them leads through a ranking rent site. But when you say generating them, I'm sorry, patients. See, I screwed it up already. Generating them <laughs> patients, you, you mean just through their, their company's site, right? Yeah, we typically, most dentists, most dentists and most practices have their own the, the upside about this niche as well is these guys, the, the dentists typically have a really aged domain. So you do always have that as an, typically have that as an advantage where I've got one, one of my dentists has a website URL that they use that I believe is 18 years old. Wow. Which it didn't, those are kind of nice to stumble onto. So this is one of the reasons I like talking to Scott because he understands like how to sell and to grow his business, but he's also, it seems like he almost gravitates back to making the SEO points of it too. So the well-rounded thing, and it kind of ties back into what I was saying last week in that you need to learn how to sell in order to grow your business. Because if you own an agency or you're doing client SEO, you are not an SEO, you're not an agency, you're not a, even a marketer, you're just a salesperson. So it's important to grow that skill, but still understand the SEO side of it. So. Asim says, hi, Scott, is local SEO your only field of expertise? Also a question on the terminology. How do people in our industry different, differentiate between digital marketing and SEO? Um, what was it? Read the first part of that one again. Hi, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> he says, is local SEO your only field of expertise? We have... We have done some national stuff in the past. We had a uh, cat odor eliminator product that we actually had a lot of success with and just got to a point where I don't know if it's smart to, to uh, backlash against the mothership, but it got to the point where the effort it took to get it to sell on Amazon just wasn't worth it. So we, it was a nice experiment to see if it could be done. It just out of just, as an FYI, to get that product to rank up in and around some of the heavy hitters like Febreze and Arm and Hammer, that type of thing, you're looking at a full, that was a solid year's worth of work to get that thing to get there. Um, but right now we're doing, most dentists are have a single office and we do pretty much, it's, it's hyper local because most people when they choose a dentist are going to choose it the first thing they look for is location the next is do they take your insurance and then the final one is review so we are 
really local. We have a few dentists on the coast that have multiple offices. So that's a little bit of a twist on local, but still very much local. And then what was the question on terminology? Uh, let me see. How do people in our industry differentiate between digital marketing and SEO? I think what he's asking there is, do you present it to them as you are SEO or digital marketing or something else? We present, we really, even though at the end of the day, it is SEO, the, the dentists in particular, a lot of people in the medical space have been burned. It's amazing when I'm in my doctor's office, the amount of marketing material, the amount of cold emails, the amount of voicemails that, that they get on a, on a daily basis, it's insane. So when we're talking with a potential dentist, we really don't use the word SEO. We digital marketing, online presence, growing your practice, because this is where it's not, it's not so much the, the how it's more about the what it's, they need at the end of the day, and this applies with most businesses, they need more business. They need more patients. They need more business. They just need to be busier. They don't necessarily care how you do it. So if you frame it in that we are going to get you more business off of the internet, we're going to get you more digital. And we really avoid using the word SEO just because it can be a bit of a dirty word because they have been burned and they just, they're tired of hearing it. And typically they've worked with somebody that hasn't delivered. So you got to be really, unless they press you, I, we tend to avoid it and just say it's growing your practice, growing your business online, getting you more business from your website or so Facebook. You, or, I'm sorry. How do you, uh, if you're, fr if you're framing it that way, how do you sh show them results then? Do you track their calls coming in or what do you do? We do. We use, uh, we use call rail. That's my favorite uh, call tracking as of late because it gives it's a couple different options. You you get a really granular look in that here's the phone number, here's how long the call lasted, and then uh, you can actually it's a little bit of a front office thing where you can listen in to the phone calls and one that's actually something we do before we onboard uh, clients is. We will call the office and just ask some basic questions like, how late you guys open? Do you take insurance? And the reason behind that is we can make the phone ring off the wall, but if they've got somebody working at the front desk that's you know really prickly or they don't they don't have really good phone skills, we're basically pushing a bunch of phone calls at a dead end. So we've had really I've been really happy with call rail, and that's that's one of the things that we show them is the that's typically with the with AdWords, the click to call AdWord type of thing. We'll show them that. We'll show them organic rankings. We'll show them tracking. And a lot of times the dentists tend to be really competitive. So we will show them here's what your competitors doing. Here's words, keywords they're ranking for that you aren't. And I hope that answered the question. Yeah, no, I did. So when you run into the situation where somebody answering the phone sucks at selling, and it's like turning them off. Do you train them or do you tell the dentist to can that person or what do you do? We, you gotta you have to tread lightly in that, but you have to, you absolutely have to bring it up. You have to be very tactful about it and let them know that, Hey, we called your office. You're not the person. And we, we typically will give them a second shot. If we call once and they have a bad day, we'll call them back. But if we're getting that consistent prickly, we will absolutely discuss that with the dentist. And sometimes you get the wife is up running the, you know, the, the dentist is in the back and he doesn't know. And we've had dentists actually say, thank you. I, I just don't have the time to monitor that type of thing. And, and we do because we have an on, on staff dentist. He's really well versed in training how to be friendly on the, on the, on the phone, how to, Essentially, you're directing them all all of the call resolutions. You're trying to either get them to schedule an appointment or come into the office because that, that phone call is technically your first appointment. Awesome. All right. Give me one second here. I think I know someone that would want to watch this. So I'm going to tag him and then we'll get on to the next questions. Asim says, Scott, you're in a very tough niche. 
What is your ranking strategy? Is it any different from what Chris is doing? Not really. That's a lot of the reason why Chris and I talk frequently and ended up being friends because there's a shared philosophy when it comes to ranking. So there's nothing, you know, I, I think even lately it's become more prevalent. The, the fundamentals just stick with the training and you'll do well. Yeah. And we tend to both be very aggressive. I think that not in our personalities. I mean, in our <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think that's part of what you mean too. So I, I, I a hundred percent agree with that. So, yep. I guess he's asking though, are there any specific nuances to ranking in like the dental niche or is there anything different than any other niche in terms of, as far as a SEO, like you have to be more aggressive with your anchor text or anything like that. It, it's, it's strange because there's, 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 there's kind of a two part answer. There are, depending on which city you're in, the, the keyword saturation on certain terms is astronomical. I mean, the percentages you look at it and say they're, that's off the charts, like that should be over optimized. But when you compare it to, you know, what we typically do is we'll take, when we come into a new market is we'll look top three to five competitors pick typically kind of a longer tail uh, term and start to rank for that because it that gets your foot in the water. It gives you something that you can show the dentist and say, hey, you're ranking for this. And we we will compare what the competition is doing and we basically just do it one better. And that's, you know, if, if 10% keyword saturation is what's ranking, then you try and be in that 10% uh, ballpark. Awesome. So competitor analysis becomes really important. Yes, extremely important because there's, particularly in the dental space, there's only so many ways you can describe a dental crown. And you're, you're going to just by the nature of what it is, you're going to be using the word dentist, dental. So you, I guess the, this is one of those, those situations where the quality of the content, your, your click through weight and dwell time actually does matter when it comes to what we have found is it's a lot of the sites that we end up outranking. They have the, the approach where it's just raw keyword of dental crown. And we've gone more towards reverse engineering some of the the user, the question type of things. And it, that's we're getting really close to the secret sauce, so I'm going to stop with that. But it, <laughs> that's enough of the clue there to follow it. Okay. Yeah, and like I said, I, if you had, if you guys aren't familiar with what I mean by competitor analysis, just check out the reviews I've been doing in the academy. And if you're not in the academy, you can check it out for a buck at superstarseo.com slash trial. So. Next question comes from Hashi. Hashi, good to see you here today. What kind of outreach do you think is the best approach to acquire dentists? Cold call, cold email, Facebook ads, et cetera. And how do you get past the gatekeeper? If, again, I have my gatekeeper is the doctor because he has DDS after his name, he can pick up the phone and get right past the gatekeeper. If I were not, if I did not have that particular connection, what I would do if it's feasible, the best thing you can do is to go in and physically talk to somebody face to face, try and schedule an appointment with their, the dentist is important, but typically they're going to have a practice manager or somebody that is, has equal skin in the game and going to have equal say. And most dentists, this, I would avoid trying to do, there's a lot of corporate dental places like, uh, Heartland is one. I'm in Kansas City, so we there may be some different. It's like Dental Dental, Heartland, Aspen. There's a lot of really big corporate dental offices. You're I wouldn't waste my time with them at all because you're not you're not talking to a decision maker. Find out a lot of times you can look at the at their website and see what their schedule is, which you don't want to do Mondays for 99% of the dentists working right now. Mondays are really, really busy. So you need to be respectful and, and be a little clever about when you show up. And then don't be, because you are showing up unannounced, you're going to have to have some patience and you may have to do it two or three times because if they've got a uh, an influx of emergency patients coming in, you're not the priority. So patient, respectful, and just 
you're going to probably hear, we had a dentist that we finally landed and this is not an exaggeration, even with my connections with the doctor on my team, we had at least 12 touch points with this particular practice before they signed on, which it sounds like a lot, but what they're paying us a month, I'm more than willing to do that. So hope that answered the question there. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, like I said, that goes right back to, to sales too. Like most SEOs I know would have tapped out after the, the first first one or two attempts. So persistence without nagging, I think is really important. There's a fine line there and you have to kind of find that on your own, but. Yeah, cool. and the, the cold emailing, the, in order of effectiveness, I would say cold emailing dentists, unless you happen to have their personal private email address, it's probably gonna get, you know, their their receptionist or their practice manager is gonna delete your email. If it says anything like SEO, you're gonna have to be really clever the second one would be calling them. And again, you're gonna to have to, any dental practice that's worth their salt, you're not gonna get past. I even have, I know the tricks and I still have a hard time sometimes getting past the gatekeeper. And then the, the most effective one, if it's feasible, is get in the car, dress up and bring them, you know, just show up and, and start the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's from a, a you know, I won't, I'm not even going to get into that. <laughs> um, all right. Next question comes from Cody. Cody says, what methods have you found the most effective when generating new business clients in the dental niche? So I guess that's kind of the same question we just answered, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Randy says, completely agree from shying away from SEO. I always tell people I do, we do digital marketing, drive traffic and leads to their site. I actually have gotten away from the term digital marketing because I've gotten a lot of people that wanted me to make like flyers and banners and stuff like that for them. So I tend to go with internet marketing, but that's just me. So but yeah, one regret I do have about the way I named my agency business is having SEO in the name. Uh, it's too late to change it by the time I started having a little bit of success, but if I had it to do over again, I would go with like superstar media or something like that. So. Yeah, I would echo that too. Even though it, it helps to have the name in our company, I would do something that's a little more broad stroke, like Breakthrough Studios or something to that effect to give it a, that way it it can wear a couple different hats and you're not pigeonholed by your name. You know, Kansas City SEO is the same way. It's pretty obvious what we do. Right. Randy says he uses CallRail for his stuff. Christopher says, are we on YouTube? No, uh, the, the software that lets me do the screen, the side by side like this won't also broadcast to YouTube, unfortunately. So technically it's against Facebook terms of service to multicast like that. So, but I do it anyway when it's just me because I can just set up two cameras, but it won't, it wouldn't work for the side by side like this, unfortunately. Live streaming has a long way to go. Haji says, how do you navigate the potential privacy issues surrounding certain niches about call recording. Has that been an issue for you or how do you deal with it? Um, on, on call rail, we actually have a, a leader that plays, I'm sure you guys have always, if you called any medical office lately, they, they do that. It's something to the, I don't quote me on this, but it's something to the effect, our attorney, met with a dentist and it's actually a really good question because this is one place you can really stub your toe and stub your toe in an expensive way with HIPAA, uh, the dental board. You can, if you don't have a lot of this stuff in order and you, you make a mistake on the website, you can have a really pissed off dentist and that can get expensive. But to answer your question with call rail, we have a leader that drops in and says something to the effect of, this call may be recorded for quality assurance and for training purposes, something to that effect. Our, our lawyer gave it the thumbs up and the dentist and the dental board. So that's, but be extra diligent. As an example, there's another little nugget in the state of Kansas. Cosmetic dentistry is, is a, is a service. You cannot be the best. You cannot be a specialist. So you are on your website, you are a cosmetic dentist or you provide cosmetic dentistry. And if you go and say anywhere, the verbiage says the best, we're the best cosmetic dentist in Kansas City or 
anything to that effect, the dental board will be in touch with you quick, fast, and in a hurry. And that is not fun. So it's a comparative marketing that they don't like. Well, it's just, it's a nuance. It's different in, in certain, like in Texas, you can't, and they, they've, they change this law pretty frequently, but in Texas, you can't, uh, you can't actually show patient. You can't put pictures of patients on your website as a testimonial. I don't, there's some privacy thing and, and that's unique to Texas. What the, the key takeaway is that you need to make sure that you're, you're having a very, once you do land the dentist, that you're having a very, it's, it's kind of a difficult conversation, but you need to discuss the HIPAA side of things, know pretty intimately what is and is not allowed by the dental board or the medical board. And because they, most of the, the medical boards will have some sort of automated scraper that is looking for these particular terms and, we did it just as an experiment on a hidden page. We threw up a page that had just that word in there and it said, this is for testing purposes only. And the, within 24 hours, there's an email that said, Hey, we noticed this. And we did the, we did it intentionally just to see how, how much of the, cause I didn't trust it. I was like, there's no way they're going to find this. And I was wrong. So we, we pulled it down. Right. Yeah. That's important. I think for any niche that you get into, I had a, an attorney client, like I want to say two years ago, maybe three years ago. And he was a uh, kind of a, he did in my opinion, too many types of law, but that's beside the point. But anyway, there was one day that they had somewhere the word top was on his website and he absolutely lost his stuff. So, because it was against some lawyer law, he was in Texas as well. So my point to that story is when you get, when you pick up a new client, make sure you learn the ins and outs and the legality of that niche, just to make sure that, you're not doing something wrong because you can get yourself in trouble. You can get them in trouble and you look like an amateur if you don't. So. Yep. Turn off chat here. Robbie says, hello, superstars. I like the side to side streaming. Me too. I think this is actually, I this software I'm using is called BeLive.tv. Owen video turned me onto it. And it's uh that course, by the way, well worth it. BizTube Academy. I pay, that's one of the few monthly courses I still pay for. So check that out. But um, yeah, I think, I think it's working really well. So, and it allows me to show superstarseo.com slash trial where you can get a $1 trial for Superstar Academy throughout the entire broadcast. That wasn't, subtle. Subtle. <laughs> that wasn't subtle at all, was it? No. <laughs> Asim says, on the local SEO, is it worth the time and effort to make each citation has a hundred percent profile completeness? Um, do as best as you can, but I would get someone that can do it really well and leave it at that. Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, that's something that I would, there are people out there that are really good at it. I personally, I find it mind numbingly boring. So I, I farm it out and then I just spot check it. Yeah, same with me. Ron says, what's the best way you guys do your branded and naked links? I'm not sure what you mean by best way, but if you mean like how do we use them, I I don't know, I'll let you answer that and then I'll I'll comment. It depends on yeah, I I always get irritated when other SEOs are like, well, it depends, but in this case it really does. It you given that a lot of time you're competing with other again with the dental centric hat on you're it's one of those niches where you you are more than likely not going to get an over optimization for exact match type of things because essentially everybody else is doing it i think we do a, i don't really put a, a ton of thought into it it it's a bit more of a random intentional randomization is the way that we approach it where try not to, to have too much of a pattern to it and do a lot of deep linking into, because what we have found is that you're, you're going to end up with just by the nature, the way that we structure our sites. And I think some of this is unique to the niche. You're going to end up ranking your homepage for a lot of stuff. And we try and break that out and, and do, instead of having the homepage be the, which isn't bad, but I like to have a little bit, more diversity in that I want some of my D 
deeper link service pages to rank outrank my home page that was a bit of a ramble i hope that addressed the question what do you mean by deeper links well instead of sending we don't after we start to see movement and start to get the site to move i stop i start to back off going hardcore towards the home page i start going more you know instead of just the main url we start going down into root canals or down into invisalign something like that just to balance it out okay all right hopefully that answered that as far as me um the way i like to build my branded and naked links are first of all i buy like a package of like 25 PBN links and use those for like the 12 URL variations. That's worked really, really well for me. And then I use those for branded as well. And then when I use anything like a web 2.0 or a citation, those are almost always URL links. So hopefully that answers that. Randy says, what's your practice for clients within a market space? Meaning I don't take another roofing client, contractor client in the same market. I already have a roofing client, but I struggle with distance but what distance between them could work? So I guess he's asking, how close together are you willing to take to dentists or any other niche? Our outside of dentistry, I tend to stay one client per metropolis. Dentists are different in that most, their footprint of their office is going to be about the max, unless you've got somebody that's driving for like dentures or implants their max footprint for just general dentistry and family dentistry is going to be about 20, 25 miles. So we, we haven't done it yet, but it, given the, the opportunity, if there were two clients in the same, uh, in the same suburb or not same suburb in the same city, we would, as long as it matched those parameters where they were not, if they're on the same block, no, I'm not going to, because you're, you're competing with yourself. It's just, this is, this is a really hot button question when you ask, because some guys are like, I'll take, you know, I, I just, there's not a moral component to it. It just, it gets really weird because at some point, one of the two is going to not be happy with you. And you got to, do you adjust that with price point or do you just decide wholesale? Hey, I'm not going to touch some of it. It, it did, Chris, I'm curious on your thoughts on this. I, I think some of this is personal preference. It's, we prefer to not really play in the same sandbox. Yeah, I agree. I uh, have a lot of photographer clients and they cover a lot of, well, I don't really anymore, but I've had a lot of photographer clients. They cover a pretty wide geographic area usually, but generally it's like I would do a Myrtle Beach, but then I wouldn't, and nobody that hasn't been here is gonna even know what I mean, but I wouldn't do like a North Myrtle Beach and a Surfside and a Georgetown. Those are all kind of the same area, but I'd have no problem doing a Charleston and a Columbia in those surrounding areas. I don't really have like a mild marker, just kind of a, I don't know, you just kind of got to get a feel for the area and know what's appropriate. So it depends. Yeah. We need to make t-shirts that say that. <laughs> yeah. I'm it afraid depends. people think it was depends the, the brand though. That yeah. <laughs> Alan says, in building out your network for the dental niche, do you use or recommend the usage of Money Robot to help establish the network aside from the usage PBNs and other techniques? Um, I don't really use, I do use some automated stuff. I don't, in that, I would rather have five really well done PBNs or a network of, of really high, high end, well crafted. Uh, web 2.0s. So when we do use SEO autopilot or money robot, it's on one of those outer tiers. And I think it is worth, it's, it's a long-term investment. It's, it's a bit of a slow play, but I think it is worth it to have your, we always treat the, the first and second tier almost like money sites. Same thing. We don't have a lot of PBNs, but those PBNs are really, highly crafted and really they they would pass manual review in a heartbeat okay with the rise of this is cody says with the rise of voice search optimization how important is the dentist near me term to the dental niche and do you optimize the home page for that or create a separate page to rank for that specific term uh, i think it's very important because you're 
you're getting a lot of, uh, you know, the, as we all know, the phone traffic is starting to increase. And there's that's one of the situations where those type of queries tend to have a, a an urgency to it. We don't, other than just uh, the experimentation that we have done, putting the phrase near me is not, there's, we saw zero results out of that. It's, you're establishing geo relevancy. Some of that has to do with your maps. Some of that is a combination of areas served type approach where when Google's parsing your site, they're able to say, they're able to, with a combination of your map, your areas served, schema, those type of things. So there's not a, it is, I suppose, optimized for that near me search, but it's not as direct as putting the term near me or you're just kind of, it, I know this is a nebulous answer, but it's, you're establishing a geo relevancy of we are, here's where we're located. These suburbs are near us. That's, that's kind of the way we do it. All right. Randy says 80% of sales are made after the sixth touch point. Good to know. That makes sense. And once again, it's why you need to learn how to sell. Sales solves, solves everything. So I can't, I know I'm preaching, but you know. Kirill says, how do you get beyond the bad experience they already had with SEO and you're charging a higher price than the previous SEOs, which scares them more? I'm going to answer this my way and then you can answer it as well. The I would use the fact that I charge a higher price to prove that I'm better than the SEOs that's, that screwed up in the first place. You, you can use the you got what you paid for with them. With me, you're going to get a highly experienced professional and you're going to get someone that charges more because I'm experienced. You're paying for the fact that I'm awesome and you didn't pay them because they weren't. Except not as aggressive as I just put it. <laughs> yeah. So that's the message I would use. You, you may have a different take on that. Similar approach where we we show the uh, we show the results, show the expertise. The other thing that we have found that has been beneficial, and this is this works outside of dentistry as well. I'm going to make a dental analogy. If you go in to the dentist office and you've got a completely bombed out mouth, and it's going to cost twelve thousand dollars to fix everything that's wrong with your mouth. Okay. If the, if the dentist shows that to you and says, "Hey, you, it's twelve thousand dollars," you're gonna you're gonna have sticker shock, and you might go find a different dentist. Now, if the dentist comes to you and says, "Okay, we got a lot going on here, but let's only focus on this," you know, this this first little section, and this is three hundred bucks. Get this: this is worst the first type of thing, where this is the thing that needs to be fixed first before anything else matters. We have found that that. At the end of the day, they're still going to be spending the same amount of money, but instead of hitting them with a big chunk up front, you're, you're doing these little micro commitments of this is the work. And sometimes it's you can see some results. It's as simple as saying, hey, for this price, we're going to go in and optimize your Google My Business service the hell out of them, maybe give them more service than what it's actually worth. And then once you build that trust component, you are able to say, well, now we're going to add this on, we're going to add this on. And, and by the time, you know, as you walk them into the pool over a, a three to six month period, you're sitting at five, six, eight, 10 K a month. And it's not a, even some of the high end cosmetic dentists in Southern California, as an example, if you sit down across the table from them, and these are the guys that do veneers at $2,000 a two. So from here to here, you're talking, that's 20 K sometimes when it's all in, even those guys, if you're sitting across the table from them, you slide 10 K a month, they're going to balk initially. You've got to phase them into it is the way that we've had good luck. Great. Asim says, what is your take on the mobile first Google update and how do you get ready for that? You go first. <laughs> um, I haven't changed my approach at all. Same here. We, you know, just make it, it's the back to the basics again, making sure you've got a mobile, mobile friendly, well-designed mobile site loads quickly. And, you know, just some subtle things like there's a plugin that we use that I, I really like. It's uh, puts the phone number and the map on the actual, on the bottom. So from a form factor, I get my phone. When, when it comes up on the phone, it's right here. So when you're holding it on your, can't get my camera to see it. You get the point though, but 
your one our mobile sites load at the bottom they've got you can with your thumb hit call now little that's all we've really done i haven't changed the approach and haven't really seen a an, a negative effect either way i know people are going to ask do you know what that plugin's called i don't okay i'll, I'll find yeah. out later and i'll we'll, i'll let you guys know Asim says, which tools do you use to validate the on-page and speed-related stuff of your websites? I use uh, Sitebulb is one that I start just as a kind of a generic overview. I This is going to sound weird, but I have been doing this long enough that I actually – I have found better results with manual, just going in and using Notepad and a calculator – to do things like keyword percentages. And I think where people fall down with on-page stuff, and I made reference to that, there was a post in Superstar the other day about Yoast. I like Yoast, I use Yoast, but you also have to understand that the green lights are a generic, very vanilla snapshot of what's going on on your page. So you may, turn all of the lights green, but you still, there's a, there's an additional layer to it. And I think uh, the using the, an automated tool as a checklist to make sure you haven't missed anything, but I, I tend to just, I've been doing it long enough to where I can just inherently look at the page and tell yeah. what the most egregious things are going on just by glancing at it and looking in the source code, very similar to what Chris is doing on his site reviews. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I am. Like, I and I, I never know how to answer it when it's something I've done for so long that I can just look at it. So I've had that's t teaching has actually made me a better SEO in that regard because it's taught me ways to look at things and explain things that I just kind of do second nature. And that's why it's been so beneficial to start Superstar SEO Academy, which you can check out at superstarseo.com slash trial for one dollar. Well, and that's when. I, we have been debating putting together some training, like my company putting together some training around what we're talking about. And that may be something that it seems to come up a lot as a, a, a non computer generated checklist for, for on page SEO. Hmm. Haji says, thank you so for the dressing up and show up at the dentist office advice. Does it also help to bring some brownies and a site audit report to the meeting? Laugh out loud. I the brownies certainly doesn't hurt because if you get the uh, if the brownies show up and the hygienist and everybody else in the staff are talking about it, the dentist is going to more than likely come in and say, "Where these come from?" Then you're you're front of mind. I don't know about a site report. I I, I don't know if there was a an attempt at humor or or not, but I wouldn't. You can, there's a need for some, yeah, I wouldn't. I, I think you're gonna, you get too technical and too nerdy too quick that you're gonna scare them off. And they, they honestly, they don't care. They're, they're gonna say, can you bring me more patients? And if you can say yes and show them how without getting, they don't care about click through rates and load times, it, is my phone ringing? Well, so I'm thinking that the brownies are to warm up the people in the front of the office. I haven't done this myself, but. I think those are more to make them more likely to let you talk to somebody that can make a decision, right? Yeah, because if you if you piss off the practice manager, you're done. You don't go back. You're right. All right. Asim says, "What is the ETA to have attached file feature available?" I don't give out ETAs. Rizwan says, "So once you disclose your recording, one can record phone calls because I thought that was against HIPAA." It is not against HIPAA if you have the, uh, and again, you need to check with your, I'm, I'm talking from my experience, the dentists that we work with that have all been approved by the practice owner as well as their counsel, their attorney. Uh, you need to check on a state by state basis. The way that we are doing it and being compliant is um, we are announcing that it is recorded and we typically don't, there's really, us as the marketing company, there's really no need for us to listen for more than, you can tell within about 20 seconds, 30 seconds of a call that this is a problematic call. And we typically stop right there and 
that's one where you, we can flag some of these and send them over to the dentist and say, hey, you need to listen to these. But we are essentially legal, indemnified and above board with all of the all of the dentists that we work with and their their counsel has approved it as well. Okay. Asim says, Scott, do you have any services at Legit? I recently saw you took your on-page service down. I did not. Uh, my on-page service should still be up there. I didn't. It was as of a day or two ago, Asim. So, yeah. Was it up there? Yeah, it was. I I found it the other day. It's okay. like Dr. On-Page or something like that, right? Yes, that's that's my, my ghostwriter name. <laughs> Marcus says, Texas is definitely unique. I'll leave that portion of the sentence alone. I work for the dentist who won the case to be able to advertise his dental implant credentials. Interesting. Hachi says, what superstar offer? Superstar offer is a term in my courses where it's a small in the foot in the door offer, just so you know. Do you think works the most for dentists? Free ranking or video, set up a Facebook pixel, set up social media profile, etc. cetera. Will you do it for free or if you were just initially trying to get your foot in the door? Uh, I would do anything for free. That, that's personal philosophy. I understand if you're starting out, that may be, you know, a lot of guys teach that stuff. I don't, I don't really do anything for free. I, if you were starting out, maybe doing something at a discounted rate, because I feel like if you come in at free or no charge, you're really cheapening the perception of your value. And that's, that's, the one thing with the dentist is you have to get them to a point where they need you as much as you need them. You, you need to establish that what you're doing has legitimate business value. And I, I concerned if you come in cheap, free discount, anything like that, that you're, you kind of painting yourself into the corner. Cause it's hard to, it's hard to come in with that approach and then turn around and say, Oh, by the way, this is 5k a month type of thing. That, that's a pretty big leap with, the most effective cost, the cost effective and most results you're going to see, I would go the Facebook route and really start working on getting, responding to any reviews. You can really, you can build out, there's Facebook with business pages now have services. So you can do implants, uh, sedate, you know, if they do sedation, any of the higher end procedures, you can build those out there. Uh, YouTube is is essentially not, in my opinion, in my experience, one of my, my Kansas City dentist is, you can't search for anything dental in Kansas City and he literally owns everything. It does not generate much because I think if people have a dental emergency or they want, nobody really wants to see what a root canal looks like. That That's, it's gross, it's really clinical. They want to know how much is it going to cost? How long is it going to take? And does it hurt? And those are typically things you can't answer with a YouTube video. I mean, it does. We all know YouTube. It can be pretty easy to rank. So if you want a quick win, that might work. But if I would go more the Facebook route. When you say the Facebook route, you mean? The Facebook pixel and then just the keeping the activity up on their on their page. So like some low level social media management. Yep. Okay. Aaron says, Hey, you. Hey, Aaron. Alan says with HIPAA and recording calls, the doctor needs to sign a business associates agreement with the firm who is listening or reviewing the recording. The agreement essentially puts the advertising group on the hook for HIPAA fines. Word to the wise, make sure your business insurance covers errors and omissions for cause under HIPAA. Okay. That is actually a very good point. If you are, if you are working in the dental medical space, any of that, anything that involves HIPAA, if you do not have this, and I'm not trying to scare you, just paint it the way it is. If you, if you are working with or trying to work with a dentist, a doctor, any surgeon, anything in that space, and you do not have business insurance in place, that needs to be your next, like you can court them and try and get them to sign on. But the minute they sign, any sort of contractual agreement with you or any sort of agreement with you. When you start touching their website, you absolutely have to have medical or business insurance and excessive amounts. What may seem to be excessive amounts of business insurance. I would make sure you have that in place because you do not want to get into a spending contest with a dentist. 
Interesting. All right. <clears throat> As she says, assuming you want to do a Dennis lead gen site, how much will you be will be appropriate to charge per lead? How much is the average patient worth to a dentist? It depends um, on location. You know, it, a smaller dentist in Enid, Oklahoma, is going to have a different what they call lifetime value of a patient versus an inner city New York guy. You can, unless you're working directly with a dentist, they're going to be pretty guarded with their numbers. You're not going to be able to call up a practice and say, Hey, what's your, what's your average case acceptance? But you might be able to, if you ask the right kinds of questions, say, call up just an example. If you call up and say, Hey, do you take my insurance? And you're going to have to do some research and, and know going into it that this dentist's office takes Aetna or Delta Dental or whatever. Call up and ask them and say, hey, do you take my insurance? They're going to say yes and then say, okay, I'm just trying to get a ballpark of what it's going to cost. I know I need a crown. Just give me a ballpark on what that's going to cost. They still may not answer it for you, but you, on the off chance, you call a couple dental offices, you're going to get a range of what that what that service is worth. You know, around here in Kansas City, you're looking a crown, eight, nine hundred bucks with insurance. So you can kind of you're never going to get a definitive answer, but you can at least be in the ballpark. I, I hope that answers the question for what to charge per per uh, per patient lead. I think that, uh, another way to answer that would be it kind of depends on how good the dentist is, like not their ability to dent to do dental work, <laughs> but uh, like Russell Brunson always tells this story about how he went to the dentist and he convinced him that his teeth were getting yellow. So he sold him on some teeth whitening and then he convinced him to get this other thing and he came in just to get a checkup and he ended up spending like three grand. So I think it depends on how good they are at marketing themselves too, right? Yeah. And it also, the technical side of dentistry, that there may be one dentist that can do, you know, side by side, they're doing the same procedure. One guy takes 20 minutes and the other guy takes an hour and a half just on the sheer, the sheer volume. One guy is going to be able to his, the pra the, his practice is more profitable because he's more efficient. Okay. So the answer is it depends. <laughs> Again, there it is. Let's see. That was Haji. So Ron says, what kind of schema do you put on different service location pages? I have a client who services several states in the West. Uh, we just put the, I think off the top of my head, this website, I think there is some dental specific uh, schema without having a site up in front of me. It, I don't really have a good answer for that. I'm sorry. Yeah. The only one I've ever really messed with was local business schema. And I know there's like, hundreds of other kinds, but yeah. Aaron says, who is the guest? I don't know. He's just some dude who dropped, jumped on my, my call here. So I hacked in. Yeah. No, this is uh, Scott Allen. He owns a successful SEO agency in Kansas and he, um, he has done a great job of niching it down. So if you're looking to learn how to niche down your agency and that sort of thing, that's kind of what we're talking about today. But of course you can ask anything except what my ETA is on something. So, uh, let's see. Sorry, I missed the intro. Well, maybe be on time. How about that? Just kidding. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. That's that's who it is. I even put it on the screen there briefly for you. So, Jeff says yes. There is, depending on the site. I'm not sure what you're talking about. I'm probably about the schema. So, and we are caught up on questions for the moment. That was a nice run there. He says he yeah. asked because you mentioned Enid, Oklahoma, and he lives in Oklahoma. My uh, my parents are actually on a farm south of Enid. That's why I kind of made the reference. It just popped in my head. Drummond, Oklahoma. Like the dad on different strokes. Yep. Everybody my, just said, oh. my, my mother is heavily armed, so don't show up unannounced. Interesting. <laughs> Kirill says, how many tiers does your PBN network consist of? Uh, some of, we've got a, a kind of a blended approach. Some of, some of the PBNs are direct to the money site. Some of them are kind of clustered together. It's a little bit of a 
I guess, proprietary way of, of setting them up. Okay. I don't have a, there's not a hard answer if it's exactly three tiers. It's kind of a case by case basis. Mine is that I don't build tiers to my PBNs. I buy PBNs that are really powerful. Jeff does it a little differently too. So figure out what works for you. I think it's kind of the best answer. I, I think I probably sit somewhere in between you and Jeff as far as it's all the same concept. It's just a little bit different, you know, kind of like personality tweaks is accomplishing the same thing. I think you tend to be a little more utilitarian and than I am in some cases. Well, you're, they, they, you're. Uh, yeah, it's the fine arts degree. <laughs> For people like who don't know, Scott originally came from an artistic background and then got into SEO. I don't know the details, but moving right along. Robbie says, if you are resellers and looking for a white label SEO service, what features would be the most important for you? I'm actually in the process of launching a white label SEO service. I've put the team together and we're building the landing pages and the infrastructure right now. So that'll be out in a week or two. So I, I don't really have an answer for that question, but I'll leave that to Scott. I just wanted to plug something because for me, it's about transparency. I mean, you've got to, there's, there are a couple, there's one seller on uh, legit that I, and I'm sorry, I can't remember the name off the, we'll put this up, I guess, in the comments after, after the fact there, there's one seller in particular that does a very clean, very, what I would call non, no nonsense type of approach and very transparent with what I don't like is some of the white label SEO companies that we have tested in the past is they will give you a description of what they're going to deliver. And then when they give it back to you, it's, there are, they're missing some links. They're not giving you the whole, which I understand sometimes with the PBN, they don't want to give away all of it, but there's, there needs to be a level of transparency. That's one of the biggest factors that I can tell because I I'm, really protective of my clients and I'm really, really gun shy when it comes to outsourcing some of that stuff. So I always have a bit of a buffer in place with when I'm using services like that, or like the one that I mentioned I have used before I've had really good luck with and I, I, I trust them. So unfortunately some of it is, is trial and error and just recommendations because unfortunately there are a lot of bad ones out there. Okay. And if you recommended it, you would probably hurt their quality because people would flop to it. I've had that happen with services I recommended before, so. Yep. Aaron says, I am facing a tough spot right now in my business, a good tough spot. I'm super busy and I need to part, start passing some work off and would like to hire someone slash get an intern. How do you go about that when building your agency? I have been historically bad about this, so I'm going to let you answer that. We here in Kansas City, we have uh, the community college that has a really good digital uh, pract uh, practicum, it's not the curriculum. And I actually used to teach Photoshop and Illustrator up at the community college. I still have a relationship with some of the staff there. and one of the guys, Patrick, that works at the community college, I have, I actually pay him a commission if he finds me a rock star or somebody that uh, shows potential. And it takes a little bit of time, but I've got two, what I would call VAs. And one of them is, JJ is at the point where the teacher is about, or the math, the student is getting close to leapfrogging the teacher just because he's, uh, extremely skilled PHP guy. So he's, he's got a lot of automation type things, but you're going to have to invest some time. We, my personal experience, we have done some, uh, with limited success. We have had some VAs from like the Philippines, things like that. The one thing I will say is not to completely shut that down with a bit of a language and a culture barrier there. When you are working with a VA that, uh, is not based in the United States. It, it's your responsibility and your charge to be very clear in your instructions and what the expectations are, as well as deliverable dates. And the other, this is a little subtle nuance, but you're, 
particularly in the Philippines or any any VA that you hire that may be in a in a developing country, it's not unusual for them to have, and it's not their fault, but they not unusual to have significant power outages where they will be uh, they may have power but they can't get online so in order to keep when you're parsing out work i realize this is a super long answer but i hope this was helpful um when you're parsing out work for them you gotta here's their weekly work that they need to do you need to have at least a portion of it that is something that they can download that they can do offline if all they can do is power up their computer if they can't get online so that you don't have uh, they have a power outage. You've lost three or four days where they're essentially not doing anything. So you're, you've you got to always be keeping ahead of them and anticipating, you know, power outages, things like that. Never thought of that. That's good to know. Aaron says affordable white label, Chris. If you're a good enough salesperson, everything is affordable. You just pass the cost on to your client. Aaron says, I want in-state. I need someone who can come in my office, et cetera. Okay. Where are uh, you located, he, Aaron? He's the one that was from Oklahoma. Uh, I don't know if I know anybody in Oklahoma that's – there might be a guy in o Oklahoma City maybe, but – Okay. Cody says, especially in monsoon season, his Filipino VAs are there, and I never give them time-sensitive stuff. Oh, there you go. That's another way to work around the, the monsoon internet outages. Aaron says, what is VA? That stands for virtual assistant. So basically it means somebody that, do, that works for you that's not a full-time employee, that doesn't come to your office. It's probably the best way I can define that. Aaron says, Oklahoma City is where his office is. Okay, let me... Let me think and see if I know anybody in Oklahoma City I could recommend for you. Okay. Do I think? Oh, yeah. No, that's oh, fine. One other, Chris, I'm I thought of. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I thought of one other thing on the on the VA that what we also did. We don't use them as much anymore because I've got my local guys that I like to. I'm big on the face to face side of things, but the one thing you can do to to weed out some of the the lesser performers is to come up with a little micro task and make it kind of some strange instructions, like have give them a list of five things to do and have number three say, skip step four, give them that, see how they perform on that. And that'll give you, I, I realize it's time, but I would rather vet somebody out early than be depending on them for something. And then you end up doing it yourself. So hopefully that helps a little bit too. That's great stuff. Uh, Aaron, sheesh. Uh, Aaron says, thanks, Scott. Feel free to message him. That's Aaron Phillips. Aaron Phillips. Very good. All right. Uh, that brings us to the end of the questions. We've been at this about an hour now, so I'll give it another minute or two to see if anybody else has anything. But um, Scott, do you have any, like, have you ever thought about putting out like a course or anything on how to niche down your agency or anything like that? Yeah, that is uh and you're going to love this. I do not have an ETA for completion, but it is in process right now. We're kind of finalizing what the modules will be and some of the approach where, you know, some of this is going to be medical centric, but some of this stuff can absolutely apply to any kind of, I think a lot of people are, are really good at SEO and are really good at the, that deliverable component of it. And I, I feel like a lot of people are struggling with that. How do you actually sell it? What are the, what's that connecting the dot? Thing that, that seems to be missing right now. Okay. Sounds like your dog has a difference of opinion. Yeah. <laughs> um, Haji says, I live in Atlanta and I am working on a niche dental agency as well. It's called the Dentist Profit System. I did the math. I only need about 15 to 20 dentists locally to make my agency a success. Oh, I'm not coming into your space. LOL. I've been doing lots of cold calling. I managed to get two gatekeepers to do video audits of their sites. The sites were in bad shape from an SEO perspective. I followed up twice since I sent the videos. I'm wondering if I should just dress up and show up. They already showed a little bit of interest initially. By the way, my video audits were about 15 minutes long each. I don't know, maybe I just did too much. Please advise. 15 minutes is probably too long, but that's a whole nother topic. Yeah, I would, echo, I would echo that. I think 15 minutes is too long and 
Yeah. Again, to, to, to circle back with, even though as an SEO, you know the technical side of it and you know the importance of all the on-page SEO things for the website, the, the dentist, the front office person, office manager, they don't care. This You've got to distill it down to, here's what your competition is doing, here's patience that you are losing to your competition, and here's how we can make your phone ring get people in the get patients in the office that's what you gotta that's your your charge is to do that and as far as stepping on our toes there the the saturation of dentists there's there's more than enough for everybody to eat in that space awesome do you think he should show up at those people or do you think it's time to move to somebody else i without you know i would it's not going to hurt to show up and or i would call if you've already, if they're responding back to you, what I would try and do is set up, typically a dentist office is going to have a day or two days where they're going to have, it's essentially an administrative day where the office is open. They may be seeing a lighter patient load or they may not be seeing patients at all. And if you can figure out what that day is, you've already, they've been talking to you, try and set up an appointment where you come physically into the office and uh, sit down and talk with them. And a lot of times, again, just based on my experience, the dentists like to talk. They like to talk about themselves. Most clients are like this as well. Sit down say, what can I help you with? And then shut up and listen. And they will tell you exactly what you can help them with. And I think a lot of times I've seen younger or less skilled, uh, this is the business side of things where you can be an awesome SEO, but if you walk in and start, trying to sell them something that they don't want, particularly with dentists. They have heard it a thousand times and they've no offense. They probably heard it from somebody that's better at it. They may even be better, more polished than I am. But if you go in and try and sell them something they don't want or something they've been burned on before, just sit down and say, Hey, thanks for taking the meeting. I really appreciate it. What can I help you with? And then stop talking. Okay. That kind of goes back to what I said last week about sales. You see how he said that, you listen to their problem. So that was step one. You identify their problem. Then you want to agitate it and say, they say that, yeah, we were getting people calling, but then they don't come in. Then you agitate that problem and say, yeah, that's a big problem because then you're not getting this, this, and this. I don't know it well enough to give specific examples. And then you say, well, you're lucky I'm here because I have your solution. So it's, it goes exactly back to what I said is identify a problem and solve the problem for them. So. That's why listening is important. So I was just kind of reaffirming what you said there. Haji says, definitely count him in for the course. Well, there you go. Kirill says, what's your go-to opening for selling SEO? Do you like to hit a pain point right away or do you go with results first? Well, again, it, it kind of goes back to what I, uh, what I was referencing where it's, asking them they, they will a lot of times will tell you if it's more of a, a cold approach i like to position it as there there are tons of graphs and data out there that talk about the advantage of having the first paid or the first slot ranking have ranking high in the maps that, that a percentage of clicks goes to the higher you are on page one that's where i come at it is that you're, and if you can call their competition by name and say, because your website is on the bottom of page one or is on page two, you're losing your patience to this practice, this practice, this practice. That dentist more than likely knows who their competition are. So when you, to Chris's point, when you're agitating it and saying, Dr. Cunningham, Dr. Smith, Dr. Whatever are, are stealing your patients because they rank higher, that's, that's what gets them to start to buy in and that they don't like, they are competitive. They don't like to be outranked. So you, there's a little bit of an ego play there. And there's, there's some truth to it there. You are by being lower, you're losing people that are looking for dental services to your competition. Great. That goes back to the competitiveness you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Great. So let's see. Cody says preferred CRM. I like uh, Salesflare but you may have a different 
we are in the process of, I'm not going to mention the one that we're using right now because I hate it and I don't want anyone else to go down that route. We're shifting our focus and we are actually trying to build one internally right now. So that's got a little mishmash in that area right now. That's one of our, that's one of our known issues. Okay. Uh, let's see. Haji says, do you have a coming soon landing page for your niche agency course? I do not. That's uh, we will get that up pretty quickly though. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Uh, Haji. When, uh, once, once he's ready with that, I'll, I'll be sure to mention it because I, I know it's valuable. I may even grab it myself to be honest. So I think I can hook you up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's back. We're caught up on questions again. It's four twenty. Hey, um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Do you have anything else you want to say? Or I think we'll probably start wrapping it up. We've been here over an hour now. Yeah, if we don't have any more questions, I'm good. Okay. Uh, do you have any parting words for us? I, you know, like I said, the the main and this will be in the course. The the main thing with the best thing you can do in the medical space and or dental space is get to know the culture, get to know the subtleties and nuance. The vocabulary is paramount. If you come in speaking their language and using the terminology correctly, you're going to, that is something with a dentist that's going to really resonate with them and, and make sure that you do the research and just keep at it. They, they are very, very busy. They've, you know, a lot of people look at dentists and they say, oh, those guys have money and they, they should be willing to spend it pretty quickly. You have to understand that a dentist is carrying a pretty significant financial load every month. They've got overhead. They've got staff. They've got medical malpractice insurance. They've got uh, their spend on a brand new panel of x-ray machine costs about what a Mercedes costs. And they're even the established ones are making payments on that. So you need to be understand a little bit of what their world looks like and and it will give you an insight into how to hit on their pain points and how to also not come across like every other marketing guy that's trying to there are some, there are some dentists as an example with us that we won't work with because the way that we do things as an example if you have a single if you have a an office that has one dentist and one hygienist or two hygienists and a front desk person when we turn the juice on, we'll kill them. And it, it doesn't do your, the existing patients aren't happy and the new patients can't get in and you're, you're really going to hose up their practice. So research is the, if the one thing I can leave you with, that's going to help you up your game and the dental space is really do your research and your homework. Awesome. I'd like to thank everybody for not pointing out the spelling error in the URL on the screen that I just now noticed. Um, <laughs> I also want to thank Scott for uh, taking the time to talk to us today. I know you're super busy. I think it was it was a great session, actually. A lot of I learned a lot of stuff from it. I hope everybody else did too. Uh, do me a favor and check out superstarseo.com slash trial for a one dollar trial with uh, Superstar Cat SEO Academy and a whole bunch of bonuses. And if you could follow me on Instagram, I'm trying to to work on that. Thanks a lot, Aaron. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to uh, up, up that and put out some nice content over there. So Scott, thanks for taking the time to hang out with us today. Everybody else, thanks for taking the time to ask us, ask and listen, and we'll see you soon. Happy to be here. Thanks. Great.